Now, there's been plenty of positive news in soccer in the region in the last few weeks. And I suppose the highlight of this weekend was the success of Longford Town in their promotion and relegation playoff against Shells on Sunday afternoon. I'm joined by their manager, Dara Doyle, who comes back to the programme. Uh, Dara, it's been an eventful two weeks since we last spoke to you. You must be on cloud nine at the moment. Yeah, listen, we're really delighted with how um, we've, we've got on, obviously, in these playoffs. We've we've put in really three top performances, which has resulted in us now being in a position where we've, we've got promoted, which was a goal, our main aim at the start of the season. And it makes all the, the commitment and the effort and the hard work that we've put in since the start of the season worthwhile that um, we've achieved what we set out to do. And um, I think our performances over the playoffs were outstanding and, and totally merited us our place in the playoffs and delighted to be able to lead this group and team and everyone involved at the club um, back to the Premier Division. It's, it's a real uh, pleasure to be able to do that. It's your first job in management and you've really only been in the in the job just over a year uh, with the tail end of last season. Had a go at the playoffs last year. It didn't quite work out the way you might have wanted it to at the first hurdle against Cabin Teeley, but very different set of, of results this year. We spoke to you just after the UCD game, which arguably you were lucky to come away with the win in that game, but it's been fairly solid since against Galway and now against Shells this weekend. Yeah, no, listen, uh, but I think in the UCD game, had we a knockout and 90th minute equaliser, we would have been hard done by because we were we were by far the better team for large periods of the game, particularly more or less the whole second half where they held out. And it did happen that they managed to hold out till, till the 90th minute, but um, had we not have got a goal in that game, it, it would have been a travesty really with our performance warranted it. But yeah, we scored late in the game and obviously we, we talked previously about how good it felt with winning with a last minute goal. Um, we went into the Galway game to play a Galway team who who had been on a really impressive run since John Caulfield came in. Um, anyone that's seen that performance will know that we put in a really controlled performance that day. We dominated the game more or less from start to finish. And I know they scored on late in the game, but they, they really didn't lay a glove on us in the game. And it, it was it was an outstanding team performance that got us through to the to the playoff final. So Listen, they were tough games against against two good sides, a UCD side that's full of good players and, a, like I said, a Galway side that was really on the charge. Um, John's done, had done a brilliant job since coming in. So for us to beat both of them sides to reach the playoff final against Shelburne itself was a great achievement. And we knew we had to go on one step further. Um, you win them games, you get nothing for them. It was all about getting to this game against Shelburne, or who at the time we didn't know who it was until um, Monday in the week there on the last results when it, when it was Shelburne that fell into ninth position in the Premier. So we had a good four, five days to prepare to play Shelburne um, from then. And listen, we prepared really well. We trained well. We were ready to play the game at the weekend. And again, we put in a strong performance. Yeah, because I suppose if you look back to that, maybe that day you started in Longford, it was the tail end of the season. You're just coming up to the the the, Nash, or the, the playoffs, as, as you mentioned. And... Neil Fenn, your predecessor, had just left the club. You'd been uh, promoted to the top job. Shells were top of the first division that year, sailing to the title. They went up. Ye fell out of the, the playoffs, and here we are, maybe 13, 14 months later. It's a very different trajectory for both clubs at the moment. Yeah, and, and I think people will find that, that in football, it, it is really sometimes some fine margins and things. You had a Shelburne inside there that three or four weeks ago were three points off Europe. They ended up in ninth position. And they ended up with that way five or six points off a European place the way things work. So it really is a is a game of fine margins, this. And like I said, we, we were beaten last year in the playoffs by Cabin Teeley on penalties. And that, that was tough to take as well. But it was an experience that we had a lot of players from that group still with us going into this year. So when we got to the playoffs, we didn't want to have the same feeling again this year. And um, we were delighted that we didn't. But we, we know with, with things being so close and the way things are, you're... There, there, there are massive highs in football, but there's also plenty of lows. And um, I think we've got to enjoy what we've achieved this time because it really is something special and, and, and how and the manner how we've done it. But um, we also have to know that we have to move on now and prepare as a club for Premier Football, which is huge. It's huge for everyone involved with the club. And we're, de we're delighted to be there and have to get ourselves ready to, to deal with being a Premier team. Yeah, and I suppose the way things happen as well, Aaron Dobbs, obviously a member of your squad last year, was on the opposing team. This year, yeah. you went looking for a replacement or another striker to fill that that void in your squad. Uh, you went to one of your teammates or one of your team's brothers in in yeah. the shape of uh, the Manley brothers, and uh, he was Joe that popped up or not Joe, it was uh, Rob that popped up mm -hmm. with the winner at the weekend. He's been a, a huge addition to the squad this season. 
Yeah, listen, he's been huge. You, you look at the season last season, he was the outstanding forward in the league. He scored 17 league goals last year. He was top scorer. He was PFAI player of the year in the league. He was he was a player that was hugely in demand. I mean, to get his signature, we had to compete with a number of Premier teams, a number of Premier teams up the north, a number of other first division teams like like get that um, were competing with us to win the league this year that all wanted him. And and we got him and we rec our recruitment was really good. We we were delighted to get him in. We felt that he'd he'd score us the goals that we needed to get promoted. And he's done that. He he got a goal in the playoff last year that put us out of it. And this season he's got a goal that's um resulted in us being promoted. So delighted with him and obviously we've had loads of other people in the team and players that have come in that have contributed to our success this year. But um yeah, Rob was it was a number one target. He was massively important that we got him although he possibly wasn't scoring the goals earlier on in the season that we hoped what he always did was put in a performance and gave everything he had and we knew the goals would come from and um, they, they sure did and with, with 10 goals and two thirds of a season you can be sure had we had another nine games that he, he'd, be, he'd be touching 15 16 17 possibly even more goals yet again so delighted uh, with rob this year of course uh, there's a, a big gap in that standard between that first division and that top division but it's it's very narrow in the middle of that league as you mentioned shells only really six points behind sligo rovers who are in prime position to qualify for europe uh, depending mm. on how the cup results go more than likely will it's it's a very bizarre season and it's a very bizarre situation in that league what you, what have you got to do to, to bridge that gap and to make make sure that it's not a one hit wonder and you're you're back where shells are next year in, in 12 months time yeah, listen, we, we, we definitely have to keep our best players that we have already. I'm sure that there probably will be more, a couple of clubs looking and come chasing them, some of our players. So it's really important that we, we recruit and keep our best players. That's massively important. We have a lot of players who we feel can step up to the level. But listen, we're, we're, we're not that after either. We know we're going to have to add quality and strength to our group. And, and we look to do that over the coming weeks to ensure that we have a squad that is, is has experience of playing in the Premier Division, but also... We we feel we've got a lot of players with with the style and the way we play that we we can deal with playing in the Premier. So I think that's going to suit a lot of our players. And if we add quality and experience to our group, it's it's going to make us stronger. And we want to be in a position where we're not going up just to make up the numbers. We will want to go up there and play the way we want to play with the style of football that we want to play. And we, we'd be positive going up there that if if we do that and add to our squad that that we can go up there and cause real problems for teams. We won't be definitely won't be going up there to defend and sit back in games. Yeah, in terms of, I suppose, the, the league table, 10 teams up there, yourselves and Drogheda, both new in the division next year. Who do you think you can stay ahead of to make sure that you're in, in that top eight that survives for 12 months? So what teams are you targeting to say, we know Finn Harps tend to be down around that neck of the woods and Ollie Horgan will have them 10th before the season even starts. But yeah, no. Realistically, who are you targeting in terms of, of where you can finish ahead of them to get that uh, survival and, and to stay in that league next season? Yeah, I mean, probably history will tell you that the teams coming up have been down and around them positions. Now, obviously, Finn Harps have stayed up and you said, Ollie, but probably having his team for ninth or 10th place already. But um, no, listen, we'll we, we go up there and we, we know anything can happen in the league. Like at the start of this season, I don't think anyone expected Cork and Pats and Derry to be down there at the bottom end of the table, which, which happened so... Who knows what's going to happen? It has been a mad year this year. I think the, possibly the only team in the in the whole country with a massive level of consistency this year was possibly Shamrock Rovers. Other than that, you, you look at a Bowes team that finished second, and, and I think they lost five games out of 18. So it's it was a really competitive between everybody else. Um, I think Rovers ran away with it. The first division was really competitive, and I'd expect it to be a really competitive league next year. You, you don't know what's going to happen. What's really important is that we look after ourselves that we recruit well, that we play well, that we perform well and, and pick up points. And, and if we continue to do that, that's all that we can really worry about, the, how other teams do. Obviously, we, we'll make sure that when we play them, we'll, we'll look to pick up points. But um, we're expecting it. It's a really difficult division, full of quality and full of experience. So, listen, we, we'll go up there looking to compete. Who are going to target as such now? We, that wouldn't be something that we'd, we'd really look at. We'd make sure we'd look after ourselves and prepare the best that we can to to give it everything we have to, to give ourselves a successful season. And, and that's the most that we can do. Is your phone busy after the last two? It's because we're two days from the final. Uh, how yeah. does it work as a manager? Let us let us into maybe how that works 
are you targeting players that you want or is your phone hopping with players and agents kind of going, Dara, how are you? The kind of a chat. How yeah, that listen, to, to be honest, it, it's a bit of both on that end. I think when, when the game finished on um, Sunday, um, by the time it finished and I got in my car and I was, I, I was driving home, I think I'd already had nearly 200 messages. I don't know how many mentions on all social media things. So when I got home, I actually just I put my phone down, turned it off and put it away. And um, I did. I didn't look at my phone till probably lunchtime yesterday. And <laughs> yeah, I had a hell of a lot of uh, messages, missed calls, all sorts going on. But I, I do. I felt it was just important to try and relax and, and enjoy what we've we achieved um, on, on Sunday without being too worried about, like you say, messages and social media. The really important group and the people that achieved that were the players and the group of staff that we had. It was so unfortunate that we didn't have our fans with us, but. Listen, we got to spend a little bit of time together as, as a staff and as some players, and I felt it was really important to do that. And I, I wanted to give them all my time rather rather than be worrying about my phone on, on, on Sunday, and, and it was nice to do that. So um, you're right, my phone has been still busy as the last couple of days, and I'm sure it really will be over, over the coming weeks. But um, this is what you, you can expect as, as a manager of, a, of, a, of Longford Town and it's something that I'm happy to do and I know it's, it's part and parcel of the job so um, no doubt it'll be very busy over the coming weeks. In terms of timelines what do you know about what the next few months have in store because I suppose expectations within the supportive base of the league will be that the season's going to start again in February uh, back to pre-season maybe the first week of January um, do you know when we're when we're back yeah. is there any no. indication at all? No, we 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 don't. We really don't. But yet, um, it's, these are crazy times with COVID and all the regulations and protocols that we have to follow. And we're very hopeful that we can be back, as we sh we would expect to be early January with training, full back into it. Like you say, full time with training and um, with the league to start in February. But we don't know. So listen, we we, we what we've what we've done over the last couple of years is we 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 give lads a couple of weeks off, and then we come back in twice a week throughout November and December. So that's something that we'd, we'd possibly do. We're getting a pitch session and maybe a gym session um, just to keep lads ticking over, just to have lads together, introduce new players, and uh, make sure that we've already got a connection together as a group before we come back and start full time, fingers crossed, in January. But as regards supporters being there and fixture lists, they're the real things that give you a buzz. I think fixture lists are usually out uh, a couple of weeks before, maybe a week before Christmas. So. I, I don't know on that one, to be fair. That's something that the FAI will have to probably come out with some information and news for us over the coming weeks. You still have the FAI Cup to, to run, so it's it's still a busy... The season hasn't finished, so um, hopefully we'll get news and a bit of clarity as soon as possible. But in the crazy days we're in at the moment, we could be left waiting, so all we can do is prepare as well as we can. How can you even chat to players? How, and like, If you don't know a start date or even just to sign a contract and put that kind of... The, the logistics of that in place how does that work yeah listen we're all in the same boat and and there's, there's every single manager that will have the same issues that i have so it's no different for me than anyone else what, what i'll do is and what, what we, we, we try and do with making sure we re-sign players and sign new players is we, we will tell them what we have to offer what we want to do and how they're going to be a part of it and um what we want to achieve as a group and, and they're key things when when you're when you're looking to bring players into your group and that you 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 go after players that you feel will will suit the group and the and the people you have in your squad. So they're things I have to do. It's not something that I've, I'm worrying about, to be honest, because like I said to you at the start, everyone's in the same boat. How much can you tell us about the recruitment policy? Like, obviously, you're not going to tell us who you're targeting to to let others know what your plans are. But um, are you do you have an increased budget next year? Will you increase the size of the squad because of the extra maybe nine games that will be expected in that division? Again, all COVID. Um, I suppose we'll re we'll see how that pans out. But what's your plan overall? Or do you have have you got that far down the road? I know it's only yeah. Listen, we still have a few, I suppose, conversations to be having with the club this 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 week about um, how we go forward and, and exactly what it is. Obviously, as as a Premier club, you'd you'd, you'd hope that. You'd have an increased budget to go after certain players because you, you don't want to go up and all of a sudden to be put in there and, and people say yeah, all of a sudden their favorites to go straight back down so i think it, it's important that we're able to recruit it's important that um we're able to compete and we, we will expect to do that we'd hope to do that we know 
with not having crowds in and, and certain things that happens at games and it does have a knock-on effect to budgets and stuff like that so again it's 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 something that we'd, we'd hope to nail down this week once once we can get that done we, we can really start um getting that work done as regards the, the recruitment it's something that myself and john and the, re- the rest of the staff would would sit down and we, we usually put out a number of targets in a number of positions and we'd probably rate them in the number of how how much we want them and and we stack on after players then and, and, and that's the way it works and, and whether it be a phone call or whatever it needs to be and you have a look at transfer lists or whatever happens so that that's how we recruit our players but we've also already obviously got a number of, of players in mind and, and and it's something that we'd be going after over the coming weeks yeah of course it's the silly season now in the in the league of ireland for the next three weeks everyone's talking contracts and wages and all that sort of stuff dara congratulations on a, a fantastic season and a, a Fantastic result against Shells at the weekend. Um, you must be delighted. We're delighted for you here. And it's great to have uh, even more National League representation at the, at the top level in the region for the season ahead. Wish you the very best luck in everything that happens between now and the, the first ball being kicked next year. And, and obviously, we'll keep tabs on you through the, the season next year as well. Thanks for joining us. And the very best luck through the offseason. Listen, I really appreciate that. And, and I know we haven't got to get up to Longford yet to celebrate with our supporters. And... Listen, depending on government guidelines over the next couple of weeks, nothing would make us happier to get up as a group and probably do something in the town to market because we've achieved something special this year as a group and, and these players will go down as remembered by this club over the years and I think it would be really nice for us to get up and just thank this for the, be thankful to the people of the town and the people that have supported us because it's meant a lot to us over this last couple of weeks with the amount of messages and phone calls that we've got from people supporting the club. So if we can get up and do something like that and as, as soon as we can, it's something that we'll definitely look to do. So hopefully we will be in a place where we can do that and we look forward to it. And yeah, maybe you can turn on the Christmas lights in Longford and each of you can be at a different light and screw them in or something. You can have that one for free. Anyway, Dara, we'll let, listen, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let A there and turn on the lights. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> listen, thanks a million, Dara. Well done. Thanks very much, Take care of yourself and, and thank you.